Hello everybody, Sanier, Engineer, MBA and Investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about the top three CRISPR picks in the landscape right now, public companies that today you can actually invest in. But before we jump into today's video, you guys know the drill. Do like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button, guys. The support has been amazing. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Subscribe if you've not subscribed yet. Hit that notification bell. And if you want to join the feature channel, you can always click on it just underneath this video. So I didn't want to talk about the top three CRISPR companies, uh, sort of inspired by this thread from infamous biotech 2K1 user that we've covered in the past. He or she made this thread here. Um, and I think it's worth going over this thread and giving my thoughts here about what are my thoughts about these CRISPR companies. So first of all, the thread starts with, I think when it comes to CRISPR, the top pick in everyone's books has to be BAME with base editing. Right now, they're the only company that do base editing. Some of the others are attempting to build their own, but no success has been shown. Base editing solves all the potential issues for first generation CRISPR tech around double stranded breaks and possible mutation. It does so by giving up the ability to do insertions. This is no big deal. No CRISPR company has done successful insertion except ex vivo. So far, the first generation companies are stuck doing gene editing. Knockouts has mutation in a gene that gets silenced. Doesn't matter. It really matters when they start to do insertions, which none of them has attempted yet in vivo. That is when I am sure we will all have issues. Interesting note, right? Inter very interesting note here. This will make base editing as a top tech in CRISPR. I think Beam has done an amazing job partnering up with technology across different applications with different partners. They get plenty of milestone and downstream royalties to make it worth a while. The other base editor is Verve, but I think it's a waste of investment to buy. Beam has a large portion of their sales. Verve has a huge challenge in the space and going with lipids huge competition with a little desire to make a permanent fix. I will be cautioning investors to avoid Verve and just own Beam as they get a huge part of Verve as, and much more. When investing capital, it's best to put in one company with the best potential. When it comes to the first generation editors, I have to go with Intelia and CRISPR Therapeutics. These two companies seem to have the top management and vision to make something out of the technology. Antilia is developing in vivo gene net knockout cell therapies and working its own base editor. They have some promising early data and the cash to drive innovation. CRISPR Therapeutics is the most advanced CRISPR program around cell therapies and regenerative medicines. They have a cure for sickle cell disease and working towards cell lines with isolate cells and diabetes. These are the top three companies, unless new ones go public. If Mammoth, Prime, or Sherlock went public, I would own those. So obviously these top three picks, I actually agree with as well. I think it is Beam Therapeutics, CRISPR, and CRISPR Therapeutics, and Antilia. And if I was to put them in order, this is my opinion, this is my order, this is my ranking, I would put CRISPR Therapeutics as number one, Antilia as number two, and Beam Therapeutics number three. And you can always leave a comments below what you think are the top three picks for your landscape in CRISPR. It may include another company like Verve Therapeutics, which obviously took BioK, Biotech 2K1 disagrees with because, and I think this point is valid. I think Verve Therapeutics obviously has a partnership with Beam ther uh, Therapeutics. And actually, you know, if Verve Therapeutics do get commercial at some point in the future, which won't be anytime soon, they'll have to pay royalties and a commercial fees and much more to Beam Therapeutics due to licensing uh, their technology, right? Which obviously makes total sense. Now, I do agree that Beam Therapeutics actually hold base editors. They're the only company right now that have, uh, they have patents over their base editors and obviously base editors is the hot topic, especially in 2022. Uh, and we all saw what Pfizer did recently, the partnership with Pfizer and Beam Therapeutics and the comments from Pfizer CEO. And I'm quoting here, we did a lot of due diligence, right? Obviously, 
talking about their deal with Beam Therapeutics. I think Beam Therapeutics is definitely a top three CRISPR company, but I wouldn't put them as number one. And the reason why I wouldn't put them as number one, in my opinion, I would put CRISPR Therapeutics as number one because CRISPR Therapeutics right now have 120 patients dosed across all their programs, and that includes CAR T cells and obviously with sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. And obviously, right now, they've actually dosed their first patient for type 1 diabetes. So that puts them, in my calculation, at 121 patients out of the 151 patients dosed around the world when it comes to CRISPR-based therapies. So obviously, they hold over 80% of their market share, if that's how you want to calculate it, with you know patients being dosed through CRISPR-based around the world. So they hold 180, over 80% of the market share. They are the furthest in clinical trials. They obviously are venturing into much more than just sickle cell disease. They have programs with CAR T cells, and they're working on obviously right now type one diabetes officially as we speak. We've covered that in the previous videos. I think they're the furthest, and to me, data is power. Power is data in this field because you know you can talk about what the academic papers show, you can talk about the research papers, but ultimately, if you don't have the data on humans to show it then to me, this is just nice on paper, but you can't apply it practically. CRISPR therapeutics have cured many, many patients around the world through CRISPR, through CRISPR by, with diseases such as sickle cell disease, beta thalassemia, and they're obviously working with their CAR T cells for, uh, for cancers and various other issues. So I love CRISPR therapeutics, number one. Number two, I would put NTLA. Again, data is king in this field because NTLA, we saw phase one data last summer in 2021 with in vivo so obviously ntla is getting the job done just their acquisition we rewrite therapeutics yesterday you know broke to me in my opinion broke grounds because they showed that they're getting the job done putting that cash in their balance sheet into use something that i would love chris therapeutics to venture into you know looking to mnas potential mnas that they can sort of acquire especially at these low valuations in these markets so but i would still put ntla as number two because they're still far behind with clinical trials when it comes to compared to CRISPR therapeutics. But obviously compared to beam therapeutics, they're much more further. And they did announce and that they're going for further with base editing. Again, no IND file. They're not going commercial yet. So they can do whatever they want. As far as we're concerned, the only base editing companies right now is beam therapeutics. And that's why I'm putting beam therapeutics in number three. Because obviously they hold base editors and they have many, many partnerships, just like with Pfizer. But I would not put them further than NTLA because, because NTLA has phase one data for NTLA 2001. And NTLA is going to get a lot done this year. By the end of this year, we'll have more data on phase one for that program. We'll get IND files and we'll get phase one clinical trials started for other programs in the NTLA pipeline. Curse what you guys think. Leave me a comment below the top three ranking for you in the CRISPR landscape. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Do like this video if you have value. Subscribe if you're not. And leave me a comment below what you guys think about the top three CRISPR companies. Thank you.